Hello, in this video I'd like to talk a little bit about subdivision surfaces and topology, uh, hopefully answering some questions like how do I round off or bevel edges, how to smooth out the model and why does this bit look weird. Uh, to start off I'll look at a couple of the primitive objects and then we'll take a look what is possible without using subdivision surface and why perhaps we would prefer to use this instead of smooth shading which brings us to our infamous default cube. Now how would we go about uh, uh, beveling the uh, edges of this? The easiest way would be to uh, um, go into edit mode by pressing tab and using the bevel tool which is control B we can choose to bevel all of these edges and if we want to add more uh, segments to this we can scroll up on our mouse wheel so maybe four or five segments uh, would, uh, would smooth these out. And you see now if we go into object mode how the edges have this sort of nice uh, bevel on them. We need to choose the smooth shading option is so that they are not so kind of like faceted which um, works pretty well. Well, what if we wanted to now go in and change the amount of bevel on here? Well, we would have a little bit of a challenge on our hands. It's not to say that it's impossible. Um, you know, we could be kind of like sliding some of these loops around and um, perhaps we could get it. By the way, there's a new slide tool, GG, uh, will allow to slide loops like this. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. So we could we could probably go in and adjust the topology like this. But let's see what we can do with subdivision surface. So I'm just going to X and delete that and add in a new cube. And I'm going to add the subdivision surface modifier. So I'll go to the modifiers buttons on the right hand side. Add modifier uh, subdivision surface. I'm going to turn the levels up to two. And what this is doing is actually if we go back to level 1 what you see is each face of our cube has divided it's been subdivided into four and it's also been slightly smoothed out so interpolated between between the angles so we turn that level up to 2 each of those faces has now been subdivided into four um, so we just can see how if we're going up through these levels the mesh can get really quite dense quite quickly so we only want to use as much subdivision as uh, is required for the shape that we need. You can see now that we've completely lost the shape of the cube uh, which means that we need to adjust our topology now. So the cube has a good topology which allows us to put in edge loops where we need them which is closer to the edges to, uh, to give us this bevel effect. So in this case what I'm going to do is press Control R to add in our edge loops. I'm going to scroll up once here to add two edge loops and because the cube is lined up along the world axis quite nicely I can press S to scale, X to go along the X axis and just scale these out towards the ends. So in this case what I'm going to do is add another two on the, uh, on the X axis here so S, Y this time and scale up a little bit and the same thing here S, Z this time and now you can see that we've produced a very similar uh, bevel here uh, you know if I press the smooth shading option you can see that it's uh, virtually the same kind of result except this time if we want to adjust our bevel we can simply maybe select these and SX scale them in and these two here S, Z and you can see how we can adjust the roundness of this bevel um, very easily just like that so this might be more useful and more controllable um, but you have to think about the topology of the object in order to get this working properly. The cube works nicely because we've got the, the topology as such that we can add in these edge loops right close to the edge if we want to and the, uh, the, the loop goes all the way around. So I'll be discussing why the, the, the flow of these in, in, a, in, in just, a, just a moment. Let's take a look at another object here, let's say the uh, cylinder object, so you should say add a cylinder, um, <laughs> yeah, cylinder, there we go. Um, so in this case, uh, with the default cylinder, it's got 32 vertices in it. If we press the smooth shading on this, what you see is it starts to look a little bit weird. And that's because smooth shading is trying to give the same shading at the edges, all around the edges here, um, to to kind of um, smooth them out so that's why the top looks weird. This brings us over to another modifier you might want to use when using smooth shading which is the edge split modifier which we can find here. 
and the edge split has an angle um, at which it will split edges so in fact edge split does the same thing if we were to select this face and press Y to split it it's actually now separated uh, from from the model and you'll see that has the same effect it stops the smooth shading interpolating between this sharp 90 degree angle so if I just uh, W and remove doubles so the edge split modifier has this angle limit and if we were to uh, raise the angle of uh, what, what, where, where the sp split starts to happen you can see uh, just after 90 degrees it should um, uh, start to um, uh, the, the smooth shading doesn't work now on this 90 degree angle similarly if we go down to something like 15 somewhere like that uh, we get back this sort of faceting because then these edges are no longer being split. So if we go the same again, we could um, let's just put this back up to whatever 70. That's a bit high, but uh, whatever. So if we wanted to bevel this, we could do the same thing. Select the top face, Control B, bevel it, and uh, put in some segments here. But once again, we get into the position where, well, really, if we wanted to adjust this bevel, maybe it wouldn't be so easy. So let's have a look at subdivision surface on a cylinder. So we've got a new cylinder here. We don't need 32 vertices, though. That's the thing with subdivision surface. We can work with less vertices. It makes our mesh easier to work with and still be smooth. So I could choose something like 16 would actually be plenty for this. Uh, you could go as low as maybe 12, but uh, yes, we're just going to choose 16 for now. Control 2 is the shortcut to add a subdivision surface modifier. And you see that it, our cube goes um, pretty strange. Now, this is because we've got this um, we've got an end gone on the top for first of all which is being converted which it, it, is being treated as a load of triangles so we need to work with our topology just a little bit in order to fix this and what we want is around these sort of defining areas where there will be a sharp angle is just a couple of loops so the easy way to do that we can just E to extrude this top and right click to leave it where it is I'm just going to scale that down just a little bit and you'll see this gives us a loop around the top that I can uh, select with alt, 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 yeah, alt right mouse there maybe I control R and slide in an edge loop just towards the top as well I can do this on the bottom side via control tab to face mode E to extrude scale back into uh, front view here so you can see now that we've got this um, this effect going on we can press smooth shading on there and how easy it would be to adjust this bevel well I could just scale this edge in and that uh, and uh, that gives it a slight effect there and then maybe just GG slide this down and you can see how we can round out now the edges of this compared to if we were trying to do um, with this where you know it would be maybe you know a little bit bit more of a challenge it's um, Oh, I pressed F twice now. GG. Um, we'd be sliding these around and uh, and trying to trying to get it working. Then we'd, maybe we'd have to play with the edge split modifier. You know, it's um, uh, it's just a little bit more work. It's going to bring us onto the subject of topology uh, in just a moment. So I'll show you a quick example of that, and then we'll we'll look at some sort of uh, more concrete examples. So if I just uh, delete those and. Shift C, recenter the cursor, go Shift A and add in a monkey here. Now again we can choose the smooth shading and um, Suzanne starts to look a little bit weird. See how the edge split modifier treats this perhaps. Oh, it improves some surfaces and we could certainly play with the, um, with the, with the split value here and see if we can find um, something we like but what you'll notice is if I go to front view and then maybe uh, with one on the number pad and then press number pad 5 what you'll notice is that we've still got these sort of very sharp edges around and you can never change the silhouette of an object using um, a smooth shading so I'm just going to delete the edge split modifier control 2 and add in our subdivision surface modifier and you can see how much this improves the silhouette as well as the general appearance of it if we wanted to, for example, uh, we'll go to edit mode, and let's take the ear for example. If we wanted to sharpen up this, um, the, the, just the edges of this ear, say, we'd want to be adding in an edge loop kind of around here. 
you can see when I control R and uh, try and do this, the purple line shows where the edge loop is going to go. So this isn't going to work for us because the topology hasn't been set up with, with that in mind. Now maybe we can adjust this somehow. We can see that the, the edge loop is flowing um, down here and it's actually going towards this triangle which makes me think that we can probably uh, fix this fairly easily. We want it to be meeting up kind of with, the, with this edge here um, through here so I can see um, that perhaps we can if we merge these two or W merge at center and merge these two W merge at center I'm like okay we still got a triangle but now we have this edge loop around here that we can we can um, do what we need with so just turn the subdivision surface modifier back on see how the ear is control R now we can add in edge loops towards the edge of the ear here and then you can see in edit mode we've got this rather more sharper uh, appearance. So again, worrying about the topology when making the model will uh, will make it easier to, uh, to 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 adjust things like this and add in loops where you want to control the subdivision surface. You know, around the eyes, for example, we'll have good loops, so we can um, you know we can kind of do uh, whatever we want here and um, and 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 make it look uh, different. Right. Okay, so let's have a look at some more uh, more topology examples. So yeah, I've used the term edge loop and face loop a couple of times. Let's have a quick look and see what I was meaning by that. So I'm going to just, I've, all I've got is here is a plane and I'm going to kind of tab into edit mode and just select everything and go W and subdivide it that many times. Uh, I've also uh, disabled the manipulators, uh, that was just with um, control control space, um, just because I find them, they get in the way. Anyway, I can select uh, what we call an edge loop with uh, alt and right click, and what this is doing uh, is actually, is uh, the reason this works is because each vertex here is, uh, is, is connected to four edges, and this uh, all the way along here it doesn't meet any triangles and um, and that that's what we call an edge loop now edge loop doesn't it, it, it sounds like it should have to uh, meet back on itself or something like that that's not the case but edge loops will terminate at what we call poles now I'll get onto poles in just a moment but if we were going to call this an edge loop we should also look at the other uh, loops available which if I go into edge select mode and if I alt and uh, alt control and right click on edge here we can see this selects all these edges and this is what we call an edge ring and when we use the control R tool to edit and um, add in uh, an edge an edge loop what it's actually cutting through is edge rings so whenever you can you can spot on your mesh where where your edge loops are going to go by looking for these edge rings Similarly, we've got a thing called face loops. That should be reasonably obvious. It's a it's a loop of uh, it's a loop of faces, and uh, this is typically uh, you know where where two edge loops are, are side by side, and they uh, they go on like that. So I mentioned the term pole a moment ago. If I was to introduce a triangle into our mesh, let's say for example, if I to take these two vertices here and press J, we've now got a triangle, well two triangles in fact. If I alt and right click now on this edge loop you'll find that it's stopping at this pole. Now this pole has is a pole because it's got five vertices, uh, five edges rather, uh, attached to it. Yeah, So we've got, we got, uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that was messier than I thought it was going to be. Um, okay, so we want to try and avoid these because we're just going to stop our edge loop uh, going here But we also want to avoid them when using subdivision surface um, Because they're going to cause artifacts on our mesh now we can we could just going to cover those in a little in a little while But what we want to look at maybe is how could we uh, resolve this into uh, in, into into quads once again? So the way to get rid of triangles, obviously this isn't a real world example because what we could do is be in face select mode, uh, just select the two there and press F to make them back into a quad. But let's say for example that this perhaps wasn't possible uh, in our case, what would we do? 
In order to remove a triangle, because it's got an odd number of sides, we need to add in or remove uh, an edge loop somehow. In this case, what I could do is Control R and add in an edge loop here, and I'll just right click to leave it in the middle. And this actually gives us a quad now here. If I press GG and just slide this back a little bit, you can make it look a bit more quad like. And you can see now that if I put in a, try and put in an edge loop around here, how our edge loop is turning around uh, this way. Now, obviously, I've still got a, uh, a triangle down here, so I can resolve that. I can put an uh, edge loop in just like this and GG, slide it back, make it look a bit more quad like. And now you can see we've got an edge loop around here, and we've also got an edge loop around there that we can put in. So de deleting edge loops can be done. You just select it, press X, and delete the edge loop. So let's just get rid of those quickly. Another way to, uh, to bend topology around corners like this is to use the Rotate Edge tool. So for example, let's take a clean area of mesh we've got going on here. If I was to select, say, this edge, and go Control e and choose rotate, say, uh, clockwise. We can see now that our edge is, edge is turning down here. We could do a similar, similar thing sort of down, down here maybe, Control e rotate clockwise, and you can see we, we've got now this loop going uh, around like that. If I face mode, I can select these and press, press W and smooth a couple of times it just makes it a bit easier to see now uh, where this path is going so you can see we've, we've got ones going around there and around there like that and the reason we'd want to create this type of topology I'll show you now if I go into vertex select mode let's just select say um, this area in the top here and I want to make a sort of protrusion of this so I can create uh, the, uh, the, this kind of uh, uh, um, curve in the in the edge loop, I suppose, around there. I can inset this by pressing I, and what I've actually got is I've got the, the what we call the boundary uh, turned off. If I press, if, if you see in the um, the operator panel after doing it, you've got this boundary option. So with it set, it will inset the boundary as well. But with that off, I can just create this topology around here like this. Uh, which is what which is what I wanted. Just step back out of that. So I'm going to B and box select now uh, this, and drag it up along the Z axis. Now, if I add my subdivision surface modifier level two, we can see how we've got this kind of nice protrusion uh, out of the mesh. I press the smooth shading, and that's looking uh, fairly nice. All right, I can sharpen up these edges now quite easily, Control r and we, because we've got this curved topology, or the topology is uh, the face look is, is bending around here like this, we can put in our two edge loops just like that to sharpen up those corners, and you can see how this is looking uh, like a really nice kind of protrusion out of the mesh like that. Conversely, if I was to do a similar thing in the opposite corner, I'll just take a, a portion of this, uh, and those obviously, and I'll just go uh, G and Z and drag them up like that. We can see that we're getting uh, a similar sort of result, that this face actually isn't particularly happy. If I look at, uh, at here like this, it's kind of being really quite warped and distorted. You see that we haven't got that sort of effect down there. And if I was to try and add in our controlling edge loops to sharpen this up, what you'll notice is that they'll go uh, kind of all over the mesh, so I'm going to have to, you know, I'd have to put one in here like that, another one in there like that, there like that, oh, uh, that, because of our topology down here, it's going all the way down there, and uh, yeah, we're making a bit of a mess, and we don't actually get a very nice result uh, at the end of it at all. Um, so that's why we want to do that. Another way to create this sort of topology is with an extrusion, so I could select some portion uh, down here, I press E to extrude and right click. It's, uh, if I'm scaling towards the cursor at the moment, I'll just change that. You can the changing the scaling point is just on the um, the pivot point here. Median point is the uh, default. You can scale that in. Actually, this is the same as doing an inset, but you'll notice that extruding or insetting is still producing this nice edge loop around there. So I can um, just select these again. G, Z and we've got our nice protrusion and control R I can loop cut these in just perfectly fine like that 
And you'll notice also this is working for our kind of curved edge loops like this. I can put one right in the middle like this, G, Z, drag that up some. And we get this nice sort of uh, sort of a veiny effect, I suppose. It would be useful for that sort of thing, certainly. And control R, I can add in our edge loops kind of wherever I want, really, just to sharpen all that up, maybe both sides. There you can see we've maintained this really nice smooth uh, smooth topology that would just that would just be impossible um, if we hadn't have, have controlled our edge loops in such a way uh, to create this uh, you know like that. So hopefully that shows you a little bit about uh, why we would do this. On the other layer here, I've just got a really quick example of um, well. Can see what it is it's just a just a sort of plane that I've uh, bent around like that and here you can see really quite clearly adding in edge loop um, how 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 it gets sharper as you move them to, towards the uh, towards the edges like that if I was to create a bunch of edge loops all the way along here like that you can see how that's absolutely fine it still maintains the nice curve like that if I introduce now some triangle or just some some pretty natty looking topology. I can use the knife tool for that. So K, select the knife tool. Let's just cut in a triangle here. Let's maybe make a sort of n-gon uh, situation at the top. So you can see this is getting five vertices in this face here. And uh, we've got a couple of couple of few triangles going on. And now in object mode it's really clear that we've got uh, a problem with the topology. We've got this kind of lump going on and it's not looking probably isn't looking how we uh, how we wanted it to so uh, the, the reason I wanted to demonstrate this is if I just uh, shift s go cursor to selected on this guy here I change my pivot point to be the 3d cursor and how do I select all that control numpad plus maybe okay so you can just get all that selected if I now R Y and I can just rotate all this using the 3D cursor. If I flatten this out, what you'll notice is when we go back into object mode, how that lump has all but disappeared uh, completely. So this is a situation where you could get away with some pretty horrible topology without uh, without getting these artifacts. So the, I guess the moral of the story is if you're going to have triangles, have them either on f either where you can't see them or where the, where the topology is is flat like this, so you can see how if I if I bend these back around again, yeah, make make the angle really extreme, then you know that it, it's totally obvious that um, what's going on. This might not be a particularly good example, but you will come across uh, circumstances like this um, where you know you're going to have to to resolve the topology will stop this kind of thing happening. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you. I hope it's been a a reasonable introduction to uh, subdivision surface modeling and a little bit about topology. Uh, have a play with it yourself and um, yeah I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun and uh, make some cool stuff. So happy blending, uh, take care and I'll see you next time.